Hi and a very big welcome back to our YouTube channel Drink in a Hand Art. My name's uh, Anne Kinahan. I'm the person with the paintbrush and my partner is Pete who's behind the camera. Last time we had a go at painting something like this. It's an abstract vase of flowers uh, in a in a, uh, a ceramic or give the impression of a ceramic of a ceramic vase and this time I would like us to work on uh, again a vase of flowers but to try and give the impression of a see-through glass a transparent glass because I think this looks very pretty but I'm not very confident about how to achieve it so I'd like us to have a go I think I need to say that when we're painting these abstract flowers, I'm not copying anything. It's not, uh, it's not an attempt to uh, copy a vase of daffodils, for instance. They are just blobby, semi-abstract flowers. I said last time as well that I was trying to implement what I'd learned from, copy, from, uh, from some workshops I'd attended with Bob Burridge. And what I'm going to do today uh, will also be based on this American artist, Bob Burridge. So do just have a look at his website. Um, OK, so uh, and I think I said last time that Bob always starts by saying what materials uh, he's using. So this time I've, uh, I'm starting with this very bright orange piece of paper. So this is just a piece of uh, used, already used and scribbled over. Um, watercolour paper that I uh, painted some white paint over and then uh, Bob says paint orange. I don't know if he means quite this bright but anyway that's what I've um, that's what I had and that's what I've done and Bob says use big paint brushes even on a small piece of paper like this so here are the brushes that I've got again just in case I need them. I've got a toothbrush again in case I'm going to use that and uh, and then our colours. Now, I think last time as well, I talked about the Bob Burridge colour wheel, which uh, I've downloaded the app onto my phone, but I can't show you that. So, so that I can show you something, I've copied the colour wheel and just onto this, this canvas so that I can talk about it. Now, um, so today, because uh, Bob says just use four colours, so he says use a dominant colour and that will be the colour where you, uh, you use most of that. So I'm going to use this bluey green colour as my dominant colour. And then that means that for a focal point colour I'm going to use this red or a range of reds. Bob says you can use as many reds as you want. And then to spice up the focal point I'm going to use these two spice colours, a bright yellow and a purple colour. So to get started, um, exactly the same as I did last time, I can just, um, and it doesn't matter what you do to start off. So I'm going to just use a bit of kitchen towel, dab it in here, um, and then dab it in into my colours. Here's my palette with the colours that we've talked about. Um, I'm going to make a bluey green out of mixing some of this blue and yellow here. Uh, I've got some reds over here including an orange and I've got a yellow spice colour and a purple spice colour and then I've got some white and black so that I can mix, mix, more, mix more shades. And again my palette is just a tray. Bob always paints, uh, just paints straight onto his table but I haven't got enough space to do that. So my palette is a tray with a bit of kitchen towel on it with a lot of water poured on that and then um, some baking, uh, baking or tracing paper. And why we do this is because it means that acrylic paint will stay, um, stay damp and moist and you can use it over several days. Okay, so let's get started. And Bob just does any old thing to begin with. I'm going to start with a bit of black. Let's dab it on. I hope I can cover up some of this orange, no guarantee. Try and 
for another one now. Put some of the, since my dominant colour is going to be the bluey greens, put some of this on now. Maybe these two blues. And I think, um, I think one of the things that you have to be, the only thing you have to be a little bit careful about is to make sure you dab rather than rub. If you rub, I think it will just turns into a muddy, uh, into a muddy mess. Which again wouldn't be the end of the world. You can recover from that, but you can let it dry and then have another go. So something like that, um, and then you can maybe use a toothbrush to. Uh, flick it on as well, pick some more paint on. I can see I'm mostly flicking it on my cup of tea and my uh, my water, water container. Anyway, something, something just like that. So what I did last week at this stage was let this dry. I sort of walked away, made myself another cup of tea and changed my water. But because we want to get on to looking at the glass vase this week, I'm going to move straight on. So earlier, um, what I did was with these, I let it dry near all the blobs. And then as I did, exactly as I did last time, I took a brush, a big brush, and I just um, mixed a background colour and painted it to make a shape of a vase and around the edge to make the shape of the flowers. And then I painted some white along the bottom to make the table. So Bob calls this negative shape painting. And again, it doesn't matter, you can make the vase whatever shape um, you like. I've decided to try and make it as a kind of glass straight-sided beaker. But you can see here are all the blobs. I then um, used the red on the colour wheel to make a focal point and, and then blobbed on some yellow spice colour and some purple. And now what we're going to try and do is turn this into a, into a see-through vase. Again, I've got one here that I did um, that I did earlier today, and again, it might not be very good. And let's hope that when we do this now, that maybe we can make it a little bit better. But we're going to attempt to do the same thing, um, same thing here. As I said, I'm not very confident about this at all, but I think if we try it together. So for um, for this bit, I am actually going to use a smaller brush, and I'm going to start with uh, with the white, and I'm going to really outline the shape of the vase, particularly particularly on the side of the light. I think um, if we decide that the light is coming from left to right, then we want the left side of the vase to be to be lit. Here we go. So just down here. And I'm going to put in the top rim. And then I'm going to uh, assume that the vase is two thirds full of water and put in the water level. Again, just an oval. Now, I think the next thing is to um, try and indicate where these stems are. I know that Bob says that when he was learning how to do these transparent vases, he spent a lot of time looking at vases of water and seeing how they, um, how, how the light and how they behaved. He said, 
and what you would see through the vase would be the colour of the background. So if the background is bluey green here, then we want some bluey green in, in the vase as well. And that will take up most of the vase except where the, where the stems are. So let's, I, what I'm going to do now is mix up, try to mix up some bluey green. So I'm mixing blue and yellow and then some white. Doesn't look like the right colour at the moment. Let me put a bit more blue in there. Right, okay, so let's have a go. I'm very tempted to draw these stems in first because I'm feeling so anxious about it, but I'm going to try. Now I think with the stems, which are bluish at the moment, we're going to pretend that the light is catching them on the left hand side. So I'm going to put some white down the left hand side of the stems. and maybe um, a darker colour on the right hand side of the stems. I'm having to trust that this will work out because at the moment it doesn't really feel like uh, anything, uh, anything at all and it doesn't seem to look like anything. And I'm not sure whether the actual water level in the vase should actually be a bit darker. I might try that. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I just put in a darker bluey green in there. Now, I know what Bob would be doing next. He would paint some light, to white, to show where the light is hitting the vase on the left hand side. So I don't know if this is going to work because, um, because this is very wet, but I'll try it while it's wet. And if it doesn't, then you'll know not to, not, not to do it when it's wet. Let's have a go. The white I'm using is titanium white because that's the very strong white. Yeah, I think that's all right, isn't it? And we could have the light also 
catching around the bottom of the vase maybe. The other thing which you have to see in the um, in the vase is some of the table. So if it's clear you would see some of this white tabletop or tablecloth and what Bob has said uh, is that it won't just be flat, it won't just follow the line of the table, it actually will appear to rise up into the stems. So I'm just going to try that. Maybe try with the bigger brush again. And I think this is a kind of smudgy white for the reflection. And now maybe as well, so that it's not quite so smooth and perfect, put a smudge of other colour, maybe a bit of, while it's still wet, a bit of blue in here. Okay, so that's not that's not perfect, but oh, I don't know if it even looks a bit like a um, a clear vase. But what I would do now is um, is leave that to dry, have another cup of tea, um, and then and then think uh, have another think about it and see whether it's uh, whether it's going to whether it needs needs some more work on it so but i hope that gives you a general idea about how to uh, how to reduce a clear a clear vase um, under these abstract flowers uh, if you like this or if it's useful at all do please subscribe so that you can see the videos as they come out and you can tell use you can decide which ones are helpful for you thank you very much